So let me start by saying that I sincerely hope that this is the last time that I will be speaking about Starliner in anything that can be construed as a negative light. I truly hope that the next flight of this ship goes off without a hitch, because obviously there is probably going to be a human crew on the next flight. Even though this test was marred by a few problems, problems that I think are still worrying and significant, it is very obvious that this ship will be carrying human passengers the next time it goes into orbit, and I certainly want to see this succeed, and I want to see Boeing Starliner carry astronauts safely up to the ISS, then see it fail. However, that being the case, the whole mood of extreme optimism within the face of all the things that went wrong on this particular mission yesterday filled me with a deep sense of concern. Indeed, I might even call it a little bit of dread, because this mission was being described with terms like excruciating and nail-biting at the beginning due to the various failures that were experienced during the flight, which although admittedly were minor, had still put the entire reliability of this craft into question, but now all of that seems to have been forgotten. And it is my sincere concern that hubris, the very thing that caused the Columbia and Challenger disasters, may again be rearing its ugly head at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... So just a few days ago, we got reintroduced to Starliner, courtesy of the astronauts on the International Space Station. Their entire mood was extremely positive, being very big advocates for this spacecraft, obviously, and that is their job, and I really don't blame them. They're probably very excited about flying on this ship. Just about any astronaut is excited to fly on a new spacecraft, regardless of what that spacecraft craft might be, or even if that spacecraft might be demonstrating some sorts of teething problems during its development. The problem is, is the Boeing Starliner has gone through a lot more than just teething problems over the last two and a half years. It's been far more substantial than that. And what really troubles me is the fact that fundamental design problems with this ship suddenly presented themselves on this flight when they didn't present themselves on the first shakedown mission. There were no problems with the thrusters originally, at least as far as them firing successfully. Obviously, they fired at the wrong time and put Starliner into the wrong orbit, but they functioned. They didn't fail. And now we've had multiple thruster fails on this mission that we didn't have the first time around. And this is very fundamental to the design. You can't have problems with the propulsion system, especially with every aspect of the propulsion system, that is to say, maneuvering thrusters, reaction control thrusters, virtually every type of thruster on this spacecraft experienced some sort of problem during this flight without being somewhat concerned about the propulsion system. That having been said, though, there are things about Starliner that I actually like. For example, the manual control systems that you're you're looking at right now. I really prefer this setup to the whole point-and-click setup on Crew Dragon. I think that a trained astronaut, a trained fighter pilot, is going to have a much easier time manipulating controls like this and be able to take much more precise control of the spacecraft than using point-and-click computer technology that might break down. I just feel a lot more secure knowing that systems like this are there in case automation breaks down. 
And it's worth noting that way back in 2019, Nicole Mann actually claimed that she could have taken control of Starliner and manually piloted it into the correct orbit with NASA's guidance. Who knows? Perhaps she could have. I certainly don't want to bet against a trained astronaut. But at the same time, all of that is in the distant past. What's in the present is everything that took place during this mission that NASA seems to be ignoring right now. The whole use of the word excruciating, and I think that that was an appropriate word to use. For almost a full day, both Boeing and NASA went into a state of blackout. They wouldn't comment to the press at all as to how the mission was going, and people became very concerned that there were some significant problems with the spacecraft. To this day, we really don't know everything that transpired during that time frame. I think that all of the data that we gathered during that 24 hours is going to be very crucial to us determining whether or not this spacecraft is actually safe. But I think it's worth noting the number of times that Kathy leaders called the entire experience that 24 hours a learning experience and how much they actually learned during this process. What did they learn? Did they learn just how awesome this ship was, how flawless it was, I think not. I think that Starliner experienced a number of problems during this blackout that we haven't been informed on yet, and it's simply because we don't have complete data from this 24 hours and it hasn't been properly analyzed. I don't think anything is being covered up. I simply think that the problems may be more significant than we know right now, but what we do know is that two of Starliner's own MAC thrusters failed during the orbital insertion burn, two of its reaction control thrusters failed while maneuvering in orbit, and on top of that, it also had problems with its life support system. Not a serious problem, but still the cooling system that keeps this capsule from overheating while it's being exposed to the heat of the sun. There were some problems with that as well, and in addition to that, its docking system experienced problems that kept the entire process of linking up to the space station delayed for a considerable period of time. A nail-biting experience is what it was called during this entire process. So yeah, it's not like there were no problems during this flight. Now, you would expect there to be some problems during a shakedown, but here's what concerns me. Starliner already had a shakedown flight. It experienced all kinds of issues during that shakedown and those issues have theoretically been solved, but these new problems that have cropped up during this new flight have nothing to do with the original issues. That's not very reassuring. And here's what I find to be even more disconcerting. In spite of all the things that went right on this flight, and granted, many, many things went exactly right on this flight, especially from ULA. Atlas V performed flawlessly. There were no issues whatsoever once it delivered Starliner to where it was supposed to be. It was only after it detached from the rocket that it started experiencing some issues, just like the last time, of course, the issues were not nearly as significant as far as we know. Here's part of the problem. We didn't recover the service module. We will never know exactly what happened to the thrusters and to the propulsion system because it burned up in the atmosphere. All we have is telemetry. Hell, we couldn't even do an EVA to have a close look at the thrusters through the eyes of the astronauts because the spacesuits on the ISS are not regarded as being safe right now. Astronaut safety is being compromised left and right at the moment, and my deepest concern is that astronaut safety is going to be put at risk again. Compromised again, because Boeing, quite frankly, can't afford another shakedown flight. They're already more than half a billion dollars over budget on a fixed price contract. Where is the money going to come from? Where is the time going to come from? They have to 
Firefly crew on this next flight. They have to start putting money in their coffers. You may recall that when SpaceX got to this point with Crew Dragon, NASA insisted that they perform many, many tests on their parachute system because of concerns that they had about its safety. Now, this was the right thing to do, but Elon Musk said straight out that SpaceX was having to invest a considerable amount of its own money in order to cover these tests. Where is that money going to come from if NASA demands additional tests on Starliner? I really don't see a solution here. But for better or worse, I don't think that NASA believes that there's a problem anymore. Quote, I don't see any reason why we can't proceed to the crew flight test next. We have a few things to work on between now and then, but I don't see any showstoppers this time. Unquote. That was from the head of the commercial crew program over at NASA. And as far as Boeing is concerned, they had a lot more when it came to the whole hubris thing. On a scale of 1 to 10, they gave it a 15. This was incredible, they said. Well, yeah, maybe it was incredible, but what I think is more incredible is the fact that we are about to put astronauts at risk on a ship that, in my opinion, is not quite ready. I think one more shakedown test is warranted, or at least a very close and exhaustive study of everything that happened during this flight and to make sure that it simply doesn't occur again. Ensure that we understand the problem with the propulsion system that they are addressed and they are taken care of because just about everything else went right. Oh yeah, and one more thing. According to unconfirmed reports, there was a failure on one of the thrusters on the capsule as well during descent and re-entry. That indicates an even more comprehensive problem with the propulsion system. This needs to be addressed. We cannot put astronauts' lives at risk just yet, at least in my opinion, but my opinion really doesn't matter. Please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this, and check the description for various ways to continue supporting me so I can keep releasing content fast and furious as I've been doing lately. So until Starliner is a safe vehicle and can actually be a legitimate competitor to Crew Dragon because that's what we definitely need. I urge all of you to stay angry about space.